Welcome back to our Sunday School Online. Hopefully next week we'll get to meet back in person. Last week we finished up the Christmas story with the wise men. This week it's back to the Old Testament. Back at the beginning of the Bible with some of our other heroes. We learned about Abraham, we learned about um, Joseph, remember his coat and his jealous brothers. And we learned about Deborah, who was a judge. This week we're going to learn about a young man. He has an entire book of the Bible all about him. Twelve chapters all about him. And his name begins with a D. His name is Daniel. You might have a friend with that name. We still use that name today. And his name meant, God is my judge which kind of means God is with me. And we're going to see in today's story, God was with Daniel. Daniel lived at a time when the country of Babylon, that king, King Nebuchadnezzar, wanted uh, more land. So they went and conquered the land where Daniel was living. And the king ordered all the best young men, the strongest, the smartest, to come be in his castle and serve him. Daniel went, and three of his friends went. And they worked for the king, and they went to school at the castle, they got smart, and but they didn't forget their God. They didn't forget the God who they learned about when they were little. Um, Daniel's parents had taught him to pray, even though he didn't have his parents with him anymore, even though he was um, didn't have a church to go to, he still prayed every day. This artist drew him very young, but the Bible says he prayed every day by the window. I don't know why. Maybe it made him feel close to God. And he didn't pray just once. He prayed. He didn't just pray twice. He prayed three times a day. He would stop what he was doing and he would pray to the one true God. And so would his friends. And um, he was there for a while. They were in Babylon for a number of years. Some artists drew him older. Here he is with a beard. Um, after a while, Nebuchadnezzar wasn't king anymore, Darius became the king. And Darius knew Daniel, he knew his friends, he thought very highly of Daniel, because Daniel really was special, he was very smart, he stood out among the other young men. And you know what happens, just like Joseph, the other guys got jealous. And some of the people were jealous of him. And they came up with a plan. And they went to Darius and they said, King Darius, how about we make a rule? For the next month, everybody prays to you. They're all going to worship you and praise you. Well, the king thought that was a great idea. And back then, sometimes kings thought of themselves as gods. So it wasn't that unusual. So he made this rule to go out in the land that for the next month, everybody would have to pray to him. Well, guess who didn't follow that rule? Daniel still prayed, not once, not twice, but three times a day, by the window, to his God. And, you know, since he was by the window, everybody could see him. He didn't hide. He could have easily gone and hidden and prayed, but he didn't. He prayed by the window, and the soldiers went and told the king about what had happened, and that they had found someone who had been praying to their god. Darius said, no, he's got to be thrown. You know what the punishment was? to be thrown into the den of lions, hungry lions. Darius said, you'll have to do it. Who is it? And when they told him it was 
Daniel, he was devastated. He really liked Daniel. But he couldn't change the law, so the soldiers rounded up Daniel. And Darius said, I hope your God will look after you and protect you. And he said to the soldiers, take him and throw him into the, Dan the lion's den. So Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. We don't know how many lions, but it said lions, so there was more than one. And we think it looks something like this. There was a rock uh, opening, they threw him in, and they rolled a rock on the top. Soldiers stood guard all night, and Daniel was in with the lions all night. But he wasn't alone. God sent an angel. The angel clothed the lion's mouth. He was safe all night. King Darius, on the other hand, did not have a very good night. He was up all night. You know how sometimes when you're worried, you're scared, you're upset, you can't eat, you can't sleep? Well, that was Darius. He had a terrible night. First thing the sun came up in the morning, he called for his soldiers. He said, let's go, we have to go check on Daniel. So they went off first thing in the morning, and they went to the lion's den, and Darius yelled out, Did your God save you from the lions, Daniel? It was silent for a moment, and then Daniel said, Yes! God sent an angel to shut the lion's mouths. The king was jubilant. He ordered his servants to pull Daniel from the lion's den. There wasn't even a scratch on him. Everyone saw that Daniel had trusted God and that God had saved him. And when we go back in person, I made this, maybe, and when we go back in person, if it's not too far away, too many more weeks, We'll have time to make, you'll have time to make one of these. It's Daniel in the lion's den and a verse. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted his God. Daniel chapter 6 verse 25. And I think we should take a minute and thank God for taking care of Daniel and for taking care of us and ask him to help us to be brave when we are afraid and ask him to be with us. Dear Jesus, we thank you that you took care of Daniel. We thank you that you love us and look after us. We thank you that you send us moms and dads and um, teachers and doctors and nurses to take care of us. Help us, Lord, to always trust in you when we get afraid. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you remember at the beginning, I said, Daniel was scooped up and taken to the king's castle along with three of his buddies. Next week, we're going to find out about the adventure his three buddies had. Daniel had quite an adventure with the lion's den, but his three buddies had quite an adventure as well. Hope to see you next week. Bye.